not to worship at Calandria United Church. Happy Mother's Day. And uh, this is one of the times of the year where it's okay that I live far away from my mum because when we forget about Mother's Day in England, I can remember that it's Mother's Day here. So mum gets two Mother's Day um, celebrations and it's okay for my little bit late. Uh, I don't get in trouble so much, <laughs> so I can always remember um, at least one of them on time. Um, so we are here to celebrate and praise God, and our psalm today is Psalm 66, and that's where our call to worship comes from. Let's join together. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Come into his house with sacrifice of praise and worship. Sing to the Lord of his name, for he has refined us like silver. Led us through fire and flood, and brought us in and into freedom. Our lives are in your hands, O God. You alone are f- keep our feet from stumbling. Let us worship together. Let us join together in song as we worship the Lord this morning. Receive the worship of our hearts, our minds, and our bodies. May it be pleasing and offering to you. We pray this in the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we continue to worship this morning, the next song takes its cue from the psalm, Psalm 66, which encourages us to join with the psalmist and shout for joy. Uh, When we're facing trials and challenges and frustrations, we can still praise God with a joyful song. So let's join together as we sing this joyful song.
Well, this morning's Mother's Day, and I'm going to invite uh, Emma and Eddie. They're going to come and share a Mother's Day poem. There is no love like a mother's, her heart is filled with care. Because Christ is her example, her Saviour's love shall share. A mother's love is endless, not changing for all time. When needed by her children, a mother's love will shine. God bless, God bless these special mothers, God bless them everyone for their tears and headaches and special work they've done. When, a day, when days on earth are over, a mother's love lives on. Through many generations, God's blessing on each one. Be thankful for our mothers who love with higher love. For power God has given and strength from us. Our next um, song is um, somewhat new. Christine's going to introduce it to us um, as we move into an attitude of prayer. We're going to take some time to, to think and yeah. So, uh, Christine, thank you. We have no fear, and all are we troubled. 
For the spirit of truth dwells in us. It gives us breath and it keeps us alive. God has brought us to this time and place. In Christ, God comes to us again saying, I will not leave you desolate. We open our lives to the spirit of truth and we seek for the life that Jesus has shown us. Forgive us, Lord, for religion without passion and for relationships that lack compassion. We reject the divine attitudes that separate us from individuals and from groups that are different to us. We want to be released from jealousy and pride and we want to stop self-congratulating ourselves by comparing ourselves with people we choose to look down upon. We hesitate to admit our failure. We don't make any effort. And we look at the glaring ambitions in our discipleship very rarely. But we know God, that Christ invites us to a full confession. May we be free for new life with an honest reflection. In Christ we are assured, I won't leave you orphaned. I am coming again to you. You are willing to flood our lives with healing and hope. We are reconciled to each other through your love. And we want to live in gentleness and in reverence. So speak to us, Holy Counselor. Empower us to live by values that are eternal. Dwell in us, Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, and fill us with a love that surpasses our present ability. We want to witness to our faith with honest speech and with loving deeds. So teach us reverence and gentleness and faithfulness. Open your presence to us. Link us with all who seek your will and who long to be together as your people. Father, make us channels of hope to more of your children across this planet because of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray our Mother's Day prayer. God of life and love, you are both father and mother to us. On this day we celebrate Mother's Day and we celebrate your love. And we give you thanks for those who have given us life. On this day we remember how often our mothers have reflected your love. We praise you, O oh God, for your gift of motherly love, both gentle and fierce, both strong and humble, both kind and true. We recall with thanks the mothers who have died and whom we miss dearly on this day. We pray for mothers who work alone day and night to raise and care for their children. And we honour the mothers who labour at this task with no support. We honour solo fathers who are carrying the responsibilities of both parents and we acknowledge the people who have stepped in when parents weren't available. We remember the mothers who have lost a child to death and must carry on. We need to sustain all of these mothers in their time of need and to answer your call to reach out to them with compassion and love. We consider those women who are new mothers and those who are expecting their first child. And we ask you, Lord, for the joy of a, an anticipation of a new life for them. May we never forget our daily duty to uphold these growing families that, in, that we share life together. May we, your church, remember and uphold all families through their lives together. For all the women who long for but never had children of their own. As they answer the call to nature to care for other people's children. 
We also pray, O oh God, for the mothers who have failed to live up to the call of motherhood. We believe you are a God who calls us to healing, and we remember that we all stand in need of your understanding and of your love. We stand in solidarity this day with mothers around the world who have watched their children die of hunger. Every mother who's been a victim of abuse, every woman who stands against a world that massacres their children in the name of war, and who dares to claim those children as collateral damage. Forgive us, Father. We lift to you the spirits of all mothers around the world. And we offer this prayer because of what Jesus has taught us. And because of him. Amen. Reading from Acts chapter 17, 22 to 31. This is when Paul is in Athens. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely spiritual you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, that I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one's ancestor he made all peoples to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps fumble about for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of our own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the de deity is like gold or silver or stone an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent. Because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. John chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. The promise of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you often, I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will also live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They, they who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. 
and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. This morning I have brought my breakfast with me to eat. <laughs> some, uh, some of my favourite fruits. I love apples. They're, um, they're some of my favourite fruits. My favourite dessert is apple pie, but specifically my mum's apple pie. But uh, normally in the UK, because the ones that she's made here haven't worked so well. Maybe it's the pastry, I'm not sure. But it's, uh, they're not as good as when I was a kid. But um, I, I thought I'd... Um, you know, show you some of these apples. I've got this really big green apple. These are probably one of our favourites. They're crunchy and tasty. They're sometimes a bit uh, sour sometimes. But uh, let's see what this one's like. Mm. It's definitely crunchy. And it's sweet. Mm. It tastes good. And I've got a dentist in the room, so an apple a day keeps the dentist away, they tell me. <laughs> Apparently eating an apple's as good as brushing your teeth, I don't believe that for a second. This one's a bit more yellow in colour, feels a little bit soft. Maybe it's not as good, but uh, let's try it anyway. It didn't have that crunch. It's still really sweet though, but it's soft. So, it's nice. And then there's this funny little one. This one's got lots of bruises, lots of random shapes. I'm not sure I really want to eat the bruised one, but um, I'll try that one as well. Surprisingly, that's really tasty. Probably the best, best tasting one. And then there's this apple. <laughs> well, it's a pear. It's a tasty pear. It's hard to swallow. <laughs> but you know, all these apples and the pear, they remind me of mums. They're all good fruit. Um, all mums can be good mums. And um, do you know, when I was a kid and I was growing up, I used to think that my mum was wonderful, but I used to look at my friends' mums who would let us stay up late and watch scary movies. I wasn't allowed to watch those. Or they'd take us out and give us lots of treats, chocolates and lollies and chips. My mum was pretty strict around that space, I can understand why. Um, and then there's friends, whose mums had lots of money and they'd take us to laser tag and they'd take us to watch football games and we didn't do those kind of things. But was my mum any less than those mums? No, my mum was the best mum for me. And I think that's what God was saying in this Proverbs 30. So I was at Unity College uh, on Thursday this week for their Mother's Day ritual. And all the mums were gathered then. The, um, the verse was Proverbs um, 30. Uh, disappeared from me here. 31, Proverbs 31. Thanks, Cindy. Um, and so um, it said in there, um, the Bible reading tells us that this long list of how mums should be or ladies should act or how they should behave. It's a bit of an intimidating list of things to do, but I wonder whether God was actually saying in that list that it's um, a way to help people understand how they can be the best that they can be, how they can be the best version of themselves, how they can use their gifts and their skills that God has given them. And in verse 13 it says, Charm can be de uh, deceiving and beauty fades away, but a woman who honours the Lord deserves to be praised. So this verse shows us that most important things about being a good mum is that she honours the Lord. And this means that she cares for the things that God cares about, that she does look after you as, you as children, that mum loves you and cares you in the way that God cares for you. So as we celebrate mums today, remember just like the apples, mums are all different. They come in all shapes and sizes. Some aren't apples at all. And <laughs> mums can be people who show us care and love and respect. So as you go into your time together this morning with Di, hope you enjoy yourselves and remember to celebrate mum today. Thank you. We're going to share in our time of offering and prayer and now we're going to receive offering uh, in, in your seats. We're trialling again to see how we, how we operate um, after COVID. Um, 
restricted that we're going to have that time together now. So thank you. So um, we're on this countdown, we're on the sixth Sunday of Easter tide, six of seven. And between Easter and Pentecost, we have been looking at the teachings of Jesus of faith and intimacy with God. Next Thursday is Ascension. So in a sense, this week Jesus is on the verge of departing. As we read last week, Jesus is in the midst of his so-called farewell discourse to his disciples between John 13 and 17. And they are understandably distraught that he is leaving. Seeking to console and encourage his friends, first Jesus assures them that his departure isn't him abandoning them, leaving them orphaned, so long as they keep going along the way that they have been traveling with him towards God. They'll still be together in Jesus as he is the way, John 14. Six. And secondly, this, week reading, uh, this week's reading, Jesus assures them that God will soon send another advocate to be with them forever, John 14 and 16. As we consider this, it's important to remind ourselves how throughout John's Gospel the mission of Jesus has been woven through the narrative. Jesus, God made flesh, came to dwell with humanity and recruits, if you will, the, disciples, the first apostles. Jesus then departs from the flesh precisely so that he can dwell with them in a deeper way, abiding in them as they abide in him. And in addition, in addition Jesus assures them that God will send the Holy Spirit, who will guide them and empower them, and at that moment they will grow into a movement, a community, a church, who will go on to do even greater works than Jesus has already done. Then another reading this morning from our lecture is from Acts, and it is a speech from Paul. Generally, in the book of Acts, Paul has been addressing people from the Jewish faith. He has shared the gospel in its length and in its breadth and in its detail. However, here he is delivering uh, near the Acropolis in Athens in Greece, on the prominent rocky hillside. Here, Paul is addressing a Gentile audience his speech is consistent with his way of being all things to all people, and he frames his message in the terms of the local shrine and poet, as we heard. And since Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles, he is boiling down the gospel message to what the essence of what Jesus meant to say. And so we see exactly what Paul thought the essence of this message was. At the start of our gospel reading, Jesus is assuring his disciples his teaching them about the coming of the Spirit. It is soothing in their time of challenge. The Spirit, Jesus explains, will be an advocate. The Greek, parakletos, meaning helper, or more literally, the translation would mean called alongside. Like a teacher comes alongside a student, or a doctor comes alongside a patient, the Spirit will come alongside teaching them everything, even beyond what Jesus has already taught them. In John 16, 12 to 13, it states, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in the truth, he will. And at the same time, the spirit will remind them of what Jesus said in John 14, 26. And so the Spirit will be their helper. The Spirit will enable them to have the teachings of Jesus in their life, to keep following them in the way that he has taught, 
especially the last one, to love one another as he had loved them. By doing this, they will remain in intimate communion with Jesus. Because I live, you also live, John 14, 19. I remember learning something in biology about symbiosis, and then this word came up in one of the commentaries, and I thought my biology teacher would help me. Uh, he would be very proud of me by uh, linking this. <laughs> I don't remember much else from biology. I did enjoy the, the cutting up of animals. <laughs> it was a bit of an interesting thing. <laughs> Wendy wasn't so keen on that part. The symbiotic communion, I think, is um, between divine and human. Uh, humanity is maintained throughout this, this commitment. Love, care and community. Paul's speech in Athens is highlighting this symbiosis when he says, in God we live and move and have our being, Acts 17, 28. Some attribute this remark as a, a quote from a Greek poet, Aratus. But regardless, this is a concept of living, moving, beyond the, uh, being in God. It's a striking comment. It's certainly not an easy concept for us to understand. How often do we hear the notion of, of God is up there, looking down upon us? I heard it this week in the funeral of Dorothy Chamberlain. Or out there in the cosmos removed from us here in our world, or popping in for a visit occasionally, or perhaps only visiting in our special sacred spaces. But we also hear of God as within us, inside our hearts, present in sacred moments of love and wonder and joy. But all of this seems to imply that God is an absent God, far removed from our everyday humdrum life, our ordinary moments with our families, However, Paul seems to turn this upside down. God isn't remote, but rather God is actually intimately present everywhere, such that it is we who are in God. We are saturated with God through and through, and at the same time, utterly dependent on God, not simply for our daily bread, but our very breath in our lungs comes from the Creator. For Paul, we as humankind are in this symbiotic communion with God. As Jesus puts it in John's Gospel, because I live in you, you also will live. And he says that I am the vine and you are the branches. And of course, abide with me as I abide with you. It looks as though the author of the Gospel of Luke was also the author of the book of Acts. And so Paul's speech in Athens is confirming the climax of the Gospel of Luke, not to be the death of Christ, but rather his resurrection. Jesus' death features in Paul's speech, but only because death is needed to make resurrection possible. Paul states that it's in the rising uh, him from the dead, God has given assurance to all that at the end of it all, Jesus, the strong yet gentle shepherd, the challenging yet merciful teacher, Jesus, the one who cried out, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, and whose new commandment is to love one another as I have loved you. This is the one, this is the Christ, this is Jesus of Nazareth. He will judge in righteousness. The resurrection of Christ, Jesus, is the reassuring statement that love has the final world in our world. As we consider the gospel reading, from John and the passage of Acts together. What is evident is the entwined narrative of togetherness. From the Spirit indwelling with us, the Spirit will be within you. To, the in, to us indwelling with Jesus, abide with me. To Jesus indwelling with God the Creator, I am in my Father. And all creation also indwelling in God, in whom we have life and move and have our very being. God is indeed out there, but God is also very much in here, without and within, as far away as the forest galaxy, and also as near as the breath that is in our lungs. As Paul puts it, God is not far from each of us in Acts 17, 27. Our human relationship with God is not us trying to relate to a far off distant being, an entity far, far away. Nor is it about relating to an interior, self-serving God within us, 
our true kind, uh, our truth, my kind of truth, kind of God. And it certainly isn't about luring God into a life with us to come closer into relationship. If we seriously consider Paul's teaching to the Athenians, we can see that God is already there and already here. It is us who need to become more present, to become more attentive, to become more gracious, to become more open to God. The divine is moving in and through and around all things, at all times, in all the ways that are possible, far from the centre to the margins and beyond all the man-made borders and controls. We are not in communication with a far-off deity, but rather we are being invited into a divine dance with the Trinity, praying with God the Son, praying through the Holy Spirit, and praying to God the Father and the Mother of us all. We can't increase the level in which we have our existence in God. We are blessed and we owe that blessing to God the Creator for his ongoing generosity in our lives and in the life of the world. However, we can become aware of this communion between us and God. We can become more thankful for it and as a result begin to change in the way that we live. We begin to live our lives accordingly to God's scripture. We begin to live life in all its fullness. As we consider living lives shaped by action, John makes it clear that Jesus understands the importance of his commandments. However, it is not the most important thing for Christ. That would be our engaging in a mutual indwelling with the Creator. This intimate life together with God, keeping commandments will follow as day and night follows one another. Jesus doesn't say, first keep my commandments and then I will abide in you. But rather he says, abide in me and I will abide in you. Love me as I have loved you. Come close to me, live in love, and you will, by the very nature of your closeness to me, keep my commandments. Love's symbiosis comes first and then everything else follows. That is important, will follow on. From the uprising of hope and love and peace that comes from communion with God comes the outflow of our love to community. And the one who is called alongside, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, is here to help us to understand that this precisely is where the coming alongside of others brings about the love of God in the world. When we begin to understand the nature of service in this way, we might in turn come alongside the broken yet beloved world, offering a glimpse of the Kingdom of God here and now. Shall we pray? Merciful God, we are grateful that you are in our midst this morning, that you go before us as we look to serve you, as we look to serve community, as we look to live out our love for you in this world. Lord, we thank you that Christ is our rock and our redeemer. We thank you that through his life, we too have life. Lord, as we continue to go about our days, Lord, help us to understand who you are in us. Help us to have this relationship that is flowing between humanity and you, the Holy One. Lord, be with us as we continue to worship your name. Fill us with your power and your grace. And Lord, ultimately, give us love for those who are unloved in this world, that they might know and understand who you are. Father, go before us. Amen. We continue with our sun worship with our next hymn, O Breath of God, Breathe on us now. Let's sing together.
commit our prayers to the people. When I say, let us pray to the Lord, please respond with the Lord, have mercy. O God, your Son remained with his disciples after his resurrection, teaching them to love all people as neighbours. As his disciples in this age, we offer our prayers on behalf of the universe, in which we are privileged to live, and our neighbours with whom we share it. For peace in our world, for an end to violence and hatred and greed, and for unity of all people, let us pray to the Lord. For the President of the United Church, for our moderator and our local leaders of church, give us courage and wisdom in all decisions. Let us pray to the Lord. For our home, Calandra, and for all those who live here, let us know your peace and love and continue in community together. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have no place to call their home, for those with no food to feed their families, for those who fear the people that they live with, give peace and resilience. Let us pray to the Lord. For those of our church family who are sick and suffering, we pray for healing and rest. For those who mourn, grant them comfort in their loss and hope in the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Open our hearts to the power of your moving, around us and between us and within us, until your glory is revealed in our love of both friend and enemy, in communities transformed by injustice and compassion, and in the healing of all that is broken. Amen. Shall we pray the words of our Lord Jesus taught us? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of our life and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of us forever and ever. As we draw our service to a close this morning, we proclaim God's faithfulness through uh, every avenue in our life, as we sing of God's abundant love in our final day, great is thy faithfulness. Let's stand together as we're open.
Creator of the universe, you made the world in beauty and restore all things in your glory through the victory of Jesus Christ. We pray that wherever your image is still disfigured by poverty, sickness, selfishness, war and greed, the new creation in Jesus Christ may appear in justice, love and peace. To the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.